Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about what I think are the two most important things if you really want to improve your miniature painting and that is exploration and repetition uh, in the proper order of course. Now this is going to be a little different because I am painting something on screen and don't worry I'll pop up the with a little overlay of exactly what paints are being used and so you can watch how I actually paint these skeletons in case you want to replicate this. But recently I saw Richard Gray shared a single test mini uh, from one of his Curse City skeletons that was done in this really nice style that was really focused in, laser focused, on the placement of light and value in his non-metallic metal. And I thought it looked really cool. And I thought, you know, I really need to practice non-metallic more on gaming figures establishing a way to get it done in such a, uh, a way that I can actually be happy with what I get in a relatively quick amount of time. I often paint non-metallic metal on display figures, but I usually avoid it on gaming figures for a host of reasons. But I thought, let's use this opportunity to practice, really practice, to explore specific light placement, to really understand value and how I want the lighting of the figure to be cast. At the same time, I thought, let's also explore something a little different than what I normally do. You know, I often paint over Zenithal, not over black. I know he paints over black. I often paint in very bright colors. I said, let's try something pretty dull. So I, let's pick a dull scheme. So this was an exploration of lots of different things that I wouldn't normally do. And I think that that's really important. You have to sometimes be willing to break your habits. We all have them. We all have these heuristics, these shortcuts we use when we're painting. Oh, this is a belt, let me get out my belt color. This is a skull, let me get out my skull color. And you can see as I'm showing right now, these skulls are done in a mix of deep uh, camo green and cloudy sky, which is a sort of warm pseudo bone color. But the fact that I'm using green instead of brown as the undertone was, a, was an attempt to say, hey, can I unify all this fig together? Constantly just exploring with these figs. These aren't part of any army for me. They were just a fun chance of something that came along with Curse City to really just see what I can do and to work on areas that I want to work on. It allowed me to work outside my comfort zone. Something that we all should do once in a while. If you're in your comfort zone, you're not learning. That's the unfortunate part of it. And it becomes really easy, especially after you've painted for a while, to just stay in that zone where you know what you know. And you know that you're going to achieve some level of results close to what you want, right? And this can happen all over the place. Maybe for you, it's base wash layer. Maybe it's particular recipes you use on particular parts of minis, like I mentioned earlier. Maybe it's not trying things like non-metallic metal. Whatever it is, that's fine for a lot of our painting. Not everything needs to be a growth opportunity if you don't want. Sometimes we can just paint stuff for armies and for fun, and that's okay. But when we want to learn, when we want to grow, when we want to advance... We have to take ourselves outside of that comfort zone because otherwise you're never going to actually learn anything. Painting more and more figs over and over again using the exact same techniques, sure, you might gain a little brush control or something like that, but for the most part, you're not improving. Now, there are things we have to accept when we push ourselves outside of our comfort zone, when we explore all right when we take these risks and those things are that we have to accept that it will take longer you know the first skeleton i did here when i was learned when i was testing out this scheme it certainly took me longer than it would normally take me to paint a single skeleton you have to accept that you'll fail uh, when i was first messing around with this there were things i didn't like about it there were elements that i wanted to change to keep pushing myself on you have to accept when you're trying new things, you won't always succeed. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. 
because that just means you have to accept that it will take multiple attempts, right? The reality is, is that if you're wanting to push yourself, if you're wanting to try new things like I was here, right? Or I'm really focusing on trying to differentiate the elements working up from black using this dull palette, but still making the figure interesting. Just lots of different things I was exploring with these figures. All while sort of inspired by Richard Gray's original skeleton. Inspired by, I certainly didn't try to copy his work exactly, although there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and it can be a great technique for learning. But I had to accept that I wasn't going to nail it the first time. And it, as a matter of fact, each of these 10 skeletons, though, as you'll see at the end, they look pretty much aligned, certainly from the perspective of a unit. They're close enough. They would look fine sitting on the table. There are differences between them. Areas where I tried to push highlights maybe a little higher and didn't like it, or tried different things or different steps, right? Because this was in itself a learning opportunity, and I had to accept that to get it right would take multiple attempts. It wouldn't be something I would just pick up and do because this was about learning. It was about working outside of my comfort zone and breaking the habits that I have, the way that I paint, the steps that I use. And I like to think of myself as a pretty explorative painter, someone who doesn't really get hooked on the same heuristic shortcuts and biases every time. But I will say this lesson, or this attempt, or whatever we want to call this, this exploration, really did open my eyes as to just how much I do rely on certain things. Unconsciously, of course. We all do. Because when I was forced to go back and really think about things from the ground up in this way, I saw just how much different my painting was when I was really being mindful about every step. And that's the last thing I'll say about this phase, about exploration, because that's going to really transition us into the next one, is that when you're working, it's often easy to be mindless about it. And what I mean by that is those heuristics don't just give us predictable outcomes, they also allow us to turn our brain off. And if we really want to grow, we have to be mindful about what we're doing. Now, eventually, though, you can't just explore forever because you have to get a new skill. But then after that, you have to build that new skill. You have to move out of that exploration zone and bring that new skill into your comfort zone. And that's where repetition comes in. As you're going to see in just a few seconds, I got one skeleton to where I wanted, and then I did it again and again and again. As you move from learning to practicing, as it becomes less of a skill that you're just trying for the first time, and more of a part of your overall repertoire. Now, it's important in that learning phase to retain that mindfulness, to keep thinking about what you're doing at all those steps. Don't just let it become unconscious reflex when you don't have it all the way down yet. Stay engaged with what you're doing. Think about where am I putting my brush? Where am I placing this highlight? You know, this was a real mindful exercise for me because I had to really look at the fig and think deeply about where exactly am I going to place every little bit of light in this metal. And then I had to do it again and again and again and again and again and again, right? Now, when I was practicing, especially focusing on things like the metal, I kind of ignored the rest. You know, some of the other parts, you don't need to work on everything at once. Focus on the thing you're trying to improve, you're trying to explore, you're trying to learn, and don't worry about the rest. Focus on that one thing. Make each figure that you're working on an opportunity to continue building whatever that new skill is that you're working on. Now, at the end of that project, there's one more vital step after all this repetition. Once you've done all that, once you've done this over and over again, as I, you can see me doing here on all these different skeletons, checking the light, placing everything in, making sure I like where everything looks one, two, three, ten times, there's a really vital last step I think we often skip. 
And that last step is appraisal. Looking at your work and really trying to see where did you fail? Where did you succeed? So putting all of that work together and understanding how'd you do? Give yourself a grade, see where your opportunities for improvement are and take that into your next project. So there you go. I hope that helps and explains how exploration and repetition can be used to grow your skill in the hobby. This was certainly a really fun project for me. If you liked this, give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. But as always, I thank you for watching this one and we'll see you next time. Thank you.